are about to hear yet another exciting international rescue adventure. One that by a strange coincidence also involved Parker and myself, but not in our official capacity as international rescue agents. The scene is set in London, the Bank of England to be precise. Lord Silton, the governor and an old acquaintance, had secured our advice on having a new ultra-modern vault installed at the bank. Now, Parker, who, as you all probably know, has done, uh, well, I mean, spent a lot of time on the subject of safes and alarm systems, was of immense help. Let us take up the story at the Bank of England soon after the vault had been installed. Ah, Lovegrove. I've uh, put the Brinkley report figures on your desk, sir. What, already? Uh, Lambert was working on them, sir. His concentration is quite terrifying. Lambert, eh? Oh, yes, I know the fellow. Chappie who absolutely buries himself in his work. Gets through ten times as much as anybody else. Yes. Could do with a few more like him. Oh, indeed one could, sir, yes. Fantastic, isn't it, Lovegrove? Here we are, standing inside the Bank of England. Outside, it appears just as it was two, three, four centuries ago. And yet down here, we have the strongest, most modern vault in the entire world. Oh, quite fantastic, Your Lordship. Indeed so, sir. One does, of course, deplore change. Oh, of course one does, sir. But it is nevertheless comforting to know that all England's deeds, monies and documents are safely under lock and key. Most comforting indeed, sir. Especially when one considers that I have the only electronic key and that I carry it with me wherever I go. Any more to come, Lovegrove? I'm dining at a stately home tonight. Don't want to be late, you know. I think they're all here, sir. Call the roll, then, eh? There's a good chap. At once, Your Lordship. Taylor? Present, Mr. Lovegrove. Carter? Yes, sir. Moore? Moore? Mm, yes, yes, here. Longman? Present, sir. Lambert? Lambert? He did leave the vault earlier, Mr. Lovegrove. I see. Very well. Barrett? Yes, sir. All present and accounted for, sir. Good. Good. Now all that remains is to close the vault. Lovegrove, we can rest assured that nobody will ever break into here. It's a great engineering achievement. I especially approve of the way the air is pumped out of the vault, sir. Papers keep so much better in a vacuum. As the huge doors closed and the automatic pumps began to suck the air from the vault, Lord Silton left the bank on his way to join me for dinner. Well, that appears to be it. You do, of course, have the key, sir. It's in my case, Lovegrove. And this case never leaves my side. But soon after he left, it was discovered that Lambert, one of the clerks, was missing. He had, in fact, returned to the vault and was deeply engrossed in his work. A search was immediately organized. Well, we've checked everywhere else and Lambert's still missing. Perhaps he is locked in the vault. I gave orders I was not to be disturbed. These figures must be finished. Hello. 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 Uh, perhaps I'll get some peace and quiet now. He's in there, all right, but he's rung off. Lambert always did bury himself in his work. You'll get no... Look at the indicator. In another two hours, all the air will be pumped out. We can't stop it and we can't open the vault. Well, here's to you, Lady Fidelity. Still can't thank you enough for all you did. Oh, it was nothing. And anyway, Parker must take most of the credit. A real treasure, that man of yours. Wish I could find someone like him. Knows his place, dresses well. Sort of fellow you could take anywhere. Ain't you got my grub ready yet, Lil? <laughs> What's the matter with you? I've only got one pair of hands, ain't I? Wasting your time here, girl. If you got more, <laughs> you'd make a few bob in a circus, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 
What are you getting for their dibs, then? It's none of your business. Hello, hello. You want to keep your shirt on? Oh, no, Arthur's talking. Still, don't blame you not telling me. If I cook like you, I wouldn't shout about it, neither. Now, listen here, nosey. Hey, manners, manners. Mr. Parker, if you don't mind. All right, then, Mr. Nosy Parker. I've been slaving over this all day. Oh, come off it, Lil. I was only pulling your leg. What you done for them? Well, I'm starting them off with a drop of consomme. Oh, audible load of old rubbish. Uh, then a special uh, escalope receipt, with all the trimmings, of course. Muck. Gives me heartburn just to look at it. And then they can finish off with their old crepey Suzettes and uh, coffee how they like it. Crepey? Cr yeah, well, they're welcome to it. Hey, what you got for me, then? Stew. Oh, me favourite. I spoil you, don't I? Here you are, here's your paper. I know how you like a read while you're eating. Ah, well, cool. Strike me feet like Finger Fred's art. You rang, madam? Yes. You may serve coffee now, Parker. Yes, milady. Would you like Parker to take your briefcase? No, thank you. It never leaves my side, you know. Everywhere I go. Good heavens. What's that noise? What is it? It's the emergency call system. I'm wanted at the bank immediately. Emergency? You mean the bank is being robbed? It could be. Beg your baby! You clumsy nincompoop! Parker! Uh, I'm sorry, milady, uh, sir. I don't know what came over me. It must be a sudden shock. I'll get something to clean up this mess. I'm terribly sorry, Lord Silton. No time for apologies. I must ring the bank immediately. Neither his lordship or I noticed the departure of Parker, whom began tampering with some electric cables. Lord Silton had, meanwhile, contacted the bank. Ah, Lovegrove. Now, what's all this emergency call about, eh? <laughs> We've been cut off. Parker. Yes? Milady, Get the Rolls Royce out, Parker. We're taking Lord Silton to London. Don't worry. We'll have you there in no time. My car is capable of phenomenal speeds. It's a very smooth ride. It feels as though we're hardly moving. Parker. Can't understand why we're going so slow, madam. I have my foot ah, down. I don't know what you're up to, but get us to London, quickly. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere in space, John Tracy was receiving an S.O.S. In a national rescue here, we're receiving a call. This is top priority, urgent. There is a man trapped in the Bank of England vault. Okay, John. I'll get you to brief Scott. If I be, I'll clear the air and remain on standby. Ah, oh, boys, good. Scott, leave immediately. Destination, England. John will brief you as soon as you're on your way. Yes, sir. This was what the boys had been waiting for. After a week of rest, they were raring to go. As Virgil stood against the tall portrait on the wall, it hinged backwards, sliding him onto the chute, which carried him down to Thunderbird 2. Alan had already boarded the passenger elevator and was on his way down to the hangar.
International rescue or not, they'll never get Lambert out now. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Tracy, but with due respect, I can't see what we can do. Unless we can get the key, and there's only one hour left. Well, we're not often beaten, Mr. Lovegrove. The equipment will be arriving any minute. rescue from space station thunderbird 2 has landed safely scott reports that owing to the underground cables and communications in london the mole cannot be used if they can't tunnel their way in they'll never rescue that poor man the journey to london seemed to be taking ages and parker was so evasive when asked if anything was wrong lord silton too kept anxiously studying his watch Finally, we turned into a country lane which ran for miles, then abruptly ended. Well, that was the last straw. Well, I'm waiting for your explanation, Parker. Uh, I, I seem to have lost my way, my lady. Lost your way to London? Yes, ma'am. Step outside, Parker. I want a word with you. Now, why are you so intent on stopping Lord Silton getting to the bank, Parker? Me? My lady? Yes, you. I can see now that it was you who put the video phone out of action. Now, suppose you explain, hmm? Parker, I'm waiting. Well, uh, it's... Oh, all right, my lady. It who began the last time I was away. In prison, you mean? <clears throat> well, if you were, uh, what do you put it that way, my lady? Uh, I shared a cell with a gentleman known to the trade as Light-Fingered Fred. Go on, Parker. Well, I was resting on my bunk one day when Fred said, Here, nosy. What's the matter now? What are you going to do when you get out? Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it much. No, no. Listen, listen. I think it's important. I mean, it's only right that a bloke should have ambition, I mean. Look, I don't want to waste these ten years I'm doing. You know, I, I'm going to learn from them, nosy. Oh, planning for the future, are you, Fed? Yeah, that's right. That's it exactly. Learn from your mistakes. Look, I may not have been a friend of society up till now, but I'm going to reform and settle down. Just as soon as I knocked off the Bank of England. You... you... you robbed the Bank of England? Not I. <laughs> you mark my words. I shall break into the vault, and I personally will do the Bank of England. So you, you see, ma'am, this emergency could be light-fingered Fred carrying out his threat. Not necessarily. But it could be. It isn't right, my lady, that I should be the one to ruin an old colleague's life ambition. Well, we haven't time to argue, nosy, uh, Parker. But if you feel like this, I shall drive us to London. 
Preaching a tree, madam. Ma madam, it is a tree. There's a tree to be. We certainly moved quicker than when Parker was driving, and I was enjoying myself immensely. I just couldn't understand Lord Sultan and Parker's worried looks whenever we approached anything. So you can't cut through the door? Well, not in the available time. We've, uh, we've just got to come up from below. Any suggestions, Brains? Well, I, I, not at this uh, moment, Mr. Tracy. There must be an answer somewhere. And I think I know what it is. You, Grandma? You want to come out the ground, but you can't use the mole. That the problem? You got it. Well, it seems I remember when I was a little girl, my grandma talking about the old London subway. Trains under the ground. New York had them as well. Of course, that was before this newfangled overhead monorail system. Hey, you may have something there. Scott, check and see if those subway tunnels are still in existence. Luckily, they were still there, but now they were very derelict. Then, Virgil and Alan, mounted on hover bikes, made their way underground. Look, Alan, Piccadilly Circuit. Yeah. Sure is a change from being up in space. Come on, this way. Ten minutes. That's all is left. Any news of the guy who's got the key? <laughs> if one made him shortcuts. Bank of England. Let's find the elevator shaft. Oh, I can hardly breathe. I must get, must get out. Must get out. This is it, Virgil. Let's get to work. failed. Lambert was pretty desperate now. He could hardly breathe and the slightest movement left him gasping for air. He had no way of knowing that Virgil and Alan were within a few feet of him feverishly drilling in preparation for an explosives charge to blast the wall down. It was about then that we finally arrived at the back. Journey's end. What a pleasant drive. I must do this more often, Parker. We'll be through any time. Must. Come on. What's happened? Are we in time? Lord Sultan, we'd given up hope. Lambert is trapped in the vault. There's just seconds left. Quickly, sir. The electronic key. The, the, the key? Yes, sir. The one you always have with you in your briefcase. Uh, uh, briefcase? It never leaves your side. Remember? Oh, oh, uh, oh, that briefcase. 
I, um, I um, must have left it at Lady Penelope's. <laughs> One of your hair clips, the lady, if you would be so kind. Parker, this is no time for flippancy. Couldn't be more serious, my lady. They haven't built a safe yet that Nosy Parker can't open. The last seconds were ticking away as Lambert reached the phone. Get Stop. Rescue. We're through. Who are you? You okay? Guess we just made it. We're international rescue. International rescue? Well, I, 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 I knew you were highly efficient, but this is ridiculous. As he spoke, the vault doors began to open. I'm, af I'm afraid I've ruined your airpin, my lady. Parker. You're an old rascal. Yes, my lady. Did you see that, Lovegrove? The Bank of England vault opened with a hairpin? Outrageous. Oh, indeed, sir. Outrageous. Well, there you have it. Poor Mr. Lambert is safe and none the worse for his ordeal. Light-fingered Fred is back behind bars. Lord Silton is looking for a stronger vault for the bank. And I'm saving up to pay for all the damage I did to the Rolls Royce on that frantic drive. And Parker has threatened to leave my service if I ever scare him again like that. Well, be with you all again soon. Jeff, how simply splendid of you to call. Is it business or pleasure?